Hi, this is Dr. Thomas Culhane at Mercy College, and I'm demonstrating today the flame test of tank A, which had the horse manure in it for the past three weeks. This is tank B. It's being filled with water and horse manure now so that it can uh, serve as a control for tank A. We can do various experiments, uh, having one control and having one be a variable. And this is a bicycle-powered incinerator, food waste grinder, that grinds the waste from the cafeteria so that we can put it in the digester and feed it and make more methane. So we start it on horse manure, and once the bacterial colony has grown large enough to produce methane, after about three weeks, then we can start feeding it food waste and measure quantities, and then figure out how many liters of gas we get for how many grams of food. So right now, to test this, because this is in under-pressure mode, I'm going to pour some water in the top to create some overpressure to force the gas out. So that should do. And then I've got the brass fitting here on the pipe so that doesn't burn. And I'm simply going to put my thumb over this, open this up, and I'm going to light it. And you see it lit, but not a lot. So it seems I need to put more pressure in. So I'm going to put more water. Okay, that should force some of the gas out. And maybe what we'll do is turn off the light so we can see it better. Okay. I'll hold this for a second. That's Reagan, who's filming. And okay. I don't know if you can even see me here. We will. Okay, so there we go. Look at that. And that's about today's yield. You can see there's still a flame here. Oh, there it goes. Now you see, now what you should see is something which I call the burping effect. Sometimes what these reactors do is they, every five seconds, there's a pulse of methane if it stays lit. And that's going to go out before the pulse. Oh, you see it went up again. So I can test that also by sealing the valve and waiting for five seconds, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000. Open the valve back up, and there you go. There's a little pulse. And that's about the rate of production. The rate of production's in basically five second intervals. So even if I put my thumb over it and I wait, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, you see how it, it lit up and then it stops. Oh. And that's about all. Now there's water in it, so you can go ahead and turn on the light. So that's, uh, that's a yield from a couple of days. Now you see that the gas has forced the water, which was up to here. That water has climbed up here. And so at this point, I should seal this down and let me get a bucket and drain that. Normally, I'm only doing this for a test. So normally I would not be uh, overpressuring it with water. What I would be doing is feeding it and then opening these valves where the fertilizer will come out. These fertilizer tubes go down to halfway in the tank. And so you feed it to the bottom of the tank and then the fats rise to the top and the proteins and uh, some carbohydrates sink to the bottom and the bacteria digest at the top and the bottom where most of the active solar energy is embedded in the food. Then, as there's mixing that occurs, the spent fuel tends to cluster in the middle, and that's what comes up the pipes here. Every time we put new food in, it'll force fertilizer out into buckets. 
and then this won't get filled with fluid because the gas comes up to the top here. But right now I was overpressuring and keeping these sealed so that I'd have a head of pressure to push the gas out and that's why eventually the water went down and pushed the gas and then filled this up. But I think that gives you a good idea of, uh, of the potential here. We definitely have good biogas. It means it is time to start feeding these critters. They've been gestating for long enough after three weeks. And so I hook this up now to this inner tube and open this valve and let the gas accumulate as, uh, as it will and then keep, start feeding it and put a little light cap on it so that some of the odor doesn't escape. And then we can take this into the laboratory and use it to run Bunsen burners, all from cafeteria waste that we grind up with this. And then we will take this to developing countries and developed countries and offer people a solution so that when there are hurricanes like Sandy that hit places like New York and people are without power, without heat, they may choose the option of taking some cheap tanks and filling them with horse manure or human manure. You could use your own. We've done that before as well. You can use human waste. And get the bacteria from that culture. Just put it in a tank filled with warm water and let it sit for a few weeks. And then once it starts making that gas, feed it your kitchen scraps ground up every day. And every day for the rest of your life, you will have methane and a wonderful fertilizer.